Uh, welcome to another episode of St. Vincent and Told Stories. On this episode, we are going to look at uh, the volcano and the flood relief monies, uh, the confiscation of canned goods and uh, missing items. Uh, big ups to all of my subscribers and if you are new to the channel, hit the like uh, button, the subscribe button and the bell icon. Cause you are going to want to see this video and many more like this one. Uh, one of my friends reached out to me on the program. And uh, she said uh, that they send how many cases of water and 500 cases of those water uh, was meant uh, for the Kaliakwa government school. And uh, now uh, she is saying uh, that the allegations are uh, that the 500 cases was never delivered to the Kalekwa government school. Uh, shelter manager, our principal, can you give us any word if 500 cases of water was delivered to that school at one time? It is also alleged uh, that uh, the items that they sent uh, did not go to the right uh, persons because she is saying uh, that they marked for evacuees on top of the packages and some of the evacuees are calling saying they never got the items uh, from the information gathered is that the ship uh, that they were placed on is called the promise kept and it normally makes a voyage to saint martin uh, so we are asking as uh, a captain of promise kept if they normally check uh, the quantity of goods when they are loaded onto the boat and when they are also offloaded. So we need answers. We need to ask the Port Authority in St. Vincent as well if they check the items when they come to the port. Uh, question. What happens when a 40 foot container comes in and the promise kept? Are all the items checked individually or they just do like a barrel count? Uh, so, uh, my friend was also asking a question, who are the evacuees? Aren't they the persons that evacuated because of the loss of a volcanic eruption? So, if the lady said uh, that she sent 500 cases and only like 250 arrived at the school, who is to accept the responsibility for the rest that is missing? If you know St. Vincent, like how untold stories know it, you should know by now that there are persons in shelters who are not evacuees. How did they get into the shelters? Did they give wrong address because of the situation with extreme poverty in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Are they running just to get three square meals per day? As I said before, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is definitely not a real place. Imagine you have persons in the green zone running to the shelters. Uh, so, uh, like all the ladies within the diaspora sent off the container and they said that items were missing. And uh, they said on the container that it belongs to evacuees. So that means now they don't have to put evacuees anymore. They have to say for the persons living in St. Vincent under extreme poverty. And you see. If when we were stressing uh, that there was extreme poverty in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and as a PM uh, did come out and say that uh, before, uh, then there would not be a mix up because when the persons are sending the items, they could have just said this item is for the whole of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In the Caribbean, we have a story with a boy called Anansi uh, that had been passed down from generations to generations. Anansi was picking mangoes one time and he went up into the mango tree and he fell to the mango. Uh, so, Kompelai and his friend was on the ground and the Kompelai and said, Anansi, pick it and throw it her down. Anansi said, I ain't come to pick the mango, I come to feel it and I'm coming down now to pick it. Uh, so, Anansi came her down and he stoned down the mango and he picked it. And come and say, boy, you're a fool, fool. You don't got your hands on the mango. Could have picked it right there. And you came down pelting stones. Uh, so, uh, that's just to show you. Sometimes we can do the right thing. Uh, but we refuse to do it. Because we always think we are right. Uh, we don't want anyone to correct us. Uh, the reason why I gave you that Anansi story. It is because of an article that was published on News 784. 
in that article uh, dated April 30th, 2021, at 17.44, it said uh, that government to rebuild temporary schools and it is Joshua Tama. If you have been paying close attention to St. Vincent and told stories, you would have seen when we did that video with the floods, when it is Joshua Tama was one of the places that was damaged the most. And when we did the recent video with the floods this year, you would have seen that E.T. Joshua was also one of the places that was damaged as well. Uh, so tell me something. Every time St. Vincent has a flood, E.T. Joshua Tarmac always floods out. So you're going to put kindergarten there. You're going to put five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old and ten-year-old there who can't swim. What are you doing? Rats and all are running in St. Vincent from floodwaters. <laughs> Wouldn't it be better if you set up temporary shelters for the evacuees and you put the kids back into the schools? Uh, because some schools are north and south of the islands are closed and we don't have access to them. Isn't it better to find a different location like put them on more solid ground? Uh, let me make this clear. If those temporary schools are set up at the Iti Joshua Tarmac and it floods and any one of those kids lose their lives, someone has to accept responsibility for negligence. And it all goes back to the Anansi and Compelion story. You know that is the right way, but you are still trying to find another way when you could just choose the right way and don't put the school there to avoid problems. Uh, why almost every time uh, that we see Professor Rabatsu doing interviews, the Prime Minister has to be involved? Is it uh, possible for him to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with one of the journalists in St. Vincent without the Prime Minister being there? Uh, since the volcano erupted, is there anyone who has lost a loved one because of kidney failure? We want you to reach out to untold stories. We don't want uh, to go off of allegations. We want to stamp out corruption and cover-ups and we need accountability. Uh, well, uh, we see that workers got uh, paid. And they were saying uh, that some workers might not get uh, paid. Uh, we are so happy uh, that they did get uh, paid. Uh, so, if there is anyone who helped to make that uh, possible, we are calling on the big man to give us a statement on that. <laughs> I know there are boots lickers who would get angry when I speak But I am a taxpayer so I have the right to speak I just want to play a short clip about what the Prime Minister said About the canned goods coming into St. Vincent If you bring in things like corned beef and tuna and sardine and sausages I don't want you to say that the customs is seizing them because the customs is not seizing them. What is happening is that the the veterinary division, animal health, public health, they're requesting clearly as part of the law that you fill out the requisite form which deals with health matters because they're interested to knowing where where these items originate where were they manufactured um they they have to look at the expiry date they if they have any suspicion they may have to test um and, and very importantly to be able to trace if if there is any consumption which creates difficulties they to trace to identify so that public health um animal health that we can deal with the issue in 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 a in a very scientific manner i just want to to indicate that to persons who are are bringing things in we still we have to make sure that the elemental laws of the land those relating to to our health and so on and everything else with accountability um, and transparency that they that they that they are followed. A uh, question, uh, Mr. PM, was accountability and transparency followed for the stimulus package and the prime grant and the flood relief from before? 
So will it be followed now for the volcano relief? Because we have seen work has already started on the roads. We want to know if any money was already touched. How was the work has paid? Uh, we know uh, that when the persons send home barrel for their families, they don't send it in boxes like the supermarket. For example, you get a whole package, a whole box of sausage. They send them one one, a five of sausage, a five of beef, and uh, they are separated within the barrels. Uh, they are not neatly packed. They are just randomly packed. So you're going to turn over a whole barrel to look for the canned stuff? Tell us what is going to happen. Do you have the infrastructure set up to do this check-in? You see, as the allegations were uh, that the canned stuff were taken away to distribute by someone higher up. Uh, so, we have seen several uh, posts on Facebook and social media of persons complaining saying their canned goods were taken away. Where are those canned goods? Or those persons called her back to get those canned goods. Uh, so, like how you just said, uh, the items are just taken out to be checked and uh, then given her uh, back. So, those persons claiming that their goods were confiscated, are they lying? Uh, let us call a spade a spade. If anything was confiscated uh, by you out of your barrel or out of your container, please contact Untold Stories. Let us clarify that. As the question also posed, why now? Because we noticed uh, that in Christmas time, uh, that wasn't uh, being done. Uh, so Vincent Chan, aren't you big enough to check for an expiry date on our product? Aren't you big enough to see that if you open a beef and it looks a certain way, you have to throw it away? Uh, well, if they say uh, there are checking canned goods, well, every product uh, then have to be checked individually. So customs officers, you have a great uh, job ahead of you. I am going to be honest. Uh, the amount of stuff coming into St. Vincent right now, uh, that is a hard task for the persons working at customs. Hello, a uh, big man. Untold stories do not warn you before. Stay off the media leak a while. You create a scene. Even some of your own supporters are getting angry. It's like you guys say stuff. And then you have to always come back and recheck that statement. A lot of times, when we visit shops and supermarkets, we see products that are already expired on the shelves. But we don't buy them. We either tell the shopkeeper or the supermarket CEO and uh, they throw them away. You have a valid point when you said uh, that according to the location, you have to really check some of these products. Uh, some of the products that come into St. Vincent aren't accepted in the United States. You remember these tall sausages uh, that persons take chances to take to the U.S., wrapping them up in clothes and so on? Those are not sold in America, hence the reason why they have to hide them to take them away. Uh, so many foods coming into St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and there are persons who do not have a meal this morning. All because of what? Agreed selfishness the foods that are coming in could feed the entire nation uh be honest you ever notice something that the population of st vincent doesn't seem to go up it always stays average uh, so if it always stays average why do we still have poverty in st vincent uh, there is a story that i wanted to touch but i notice remember the time with the all in story that we did not run with it. We waited on the two sides. Uh, that's why I'm not touching that story yet. I know persons are waiting on it. And uh, there are articles that always rush to publish things. But we are not that way. We do our research first. Uh, big ups to everyone uh, that is praying, that is donating, that is supporting St. Vincent and the Grenadines in this time that we are going through. Both locally, regionally and internationally. I thank you. <music>